painting in the in the idea of yeah. Well, it is mixing of course the Italian style, which is much more in this period, I would say, is much more violinistic. So you have fast notes, you have fast movements, and it's a very good balance between the two things. One thing that might interest you guys is that we play from the earliest edition of this piece. So this is a photocopy of the, exactly the book that was printed in 1734. And, and as you can see, well, I hope you can see, there are just two lines and I underscore. And actually she can, when you expect a piano accompaniment, you have two stays for the piano. But in this case, she is reading the left hand in the, in the second stay. And what she is playing on top of it is totally improvised. The improvisation is, of course, not free because there are numbers. Then they are saying what kind of harmony there's supposed to be on top of the bass note. But basically, the way of printing this music was the violin part, the bass part, and then all the harmony that is realized by the right hand of the harpsichord player is improvised. Uh, well, if you have any questions at the end, I will be happy to answer, to try. <laughs> very quickly <laughs> and they break very often. So what's the benefit of it? They have a much warmer sound mm -hmm. than yeah. the metal and the, uh, this is the benefit. Then there's the reason why we use them which is because that were the strings that they were using at the time okay. that this music of this instrument was... Cat cuts on the... Sorry? Cat cuts. No, or it's, it's uh, mostly sheep guts and nowadays, that was traditionally, historically, was sheep cut. It's just called cat cut. That's just the name. Ah, okay. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's from a cat. Ah, <laughs> okay. And it, no, no, nowadays, no, it's no, mostly no, either no, sheep, no, either no, cows. Okay. No, we're not killing cat. Yeah. <laughs> just to yeah. play the violin. <laughs>
this was the first movement. I forgot to tell you that all, most of the Baroque sonatas are made of four movements, so four little parts, as this one, and it depends, some are longer, some are shorter, and normally they alternate fast movement and slow, uh, fast and slow. <coughs>
exactly the same or would you play differently? Definitely it will be different. Yeah. As it's improvisation, it yeah. change every time. So, so yeah, yeah, so if you would play it again now it would be still it would be different. Yeah. So that you prepared it in a way. You prepare the basic yeah, the course, the harmony, but, yeah. but then after you change. So what would it be then? How to play? Well, uh, most, of, most of the time, no, first of all, harmony doesn't mean a melodic position. So you can play the same chord with the, well, this, I mean, right? Or, uh, or, so ju this is just, of course, a matter of where you're, your voices are going, but you can have the. How do you say? The tonic? Tonic? The tonic <coughs> on top, or you can have the fifth or the third, and it changes already a lot. And then, of course, what she's doing, she's not only playing the chords, she's also playing passing notes, she's playing trills, she's doing ornamentation, which is her job. <laughs> and so, in this case, in this sense, it can always change, because in Different voice position means that you can play a different passing note, so you can put a seventh, you can skip it, you can add a ninth. You can really make a lot of difference in, in the army. And for what concerns my playing, in this period it was still very, very common to add ornamentation to what you have written. So what I have written here is quite a lot because already in the 18th century, Composers were taking care much more than in earlier times about the performance of their pieces. I would like, I can even show you if you're interested. A uh, piece written in the beginning of the 17th century and a piece written at the beginning, like this, of the 18th century. You can see the differences. Basically, in one you have only the notes, nothing else. You need to know how to play, you need to know everything. Here you have slurs, you have articulation markings, you have forte and piano, you have a lot of information for the performance. Uh, but still, I'm adding ornaments to it. So, and most of them, yeah, some of them I really like them, so I always play them, but some of them are just happening. That's the nice thing of performing this kind of record. Could also do imitations of what you do, right? Yeah, there's also. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Well, depending on the tempo, I don't know. Yeah, of course. Also, a lot of dynamic uh, questions. Yeah. 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 Could you give an example of, of, let's say, a few bars and then do it so extreme, different as possible? Yeah. Uh, I play Maybe it's a slow movement? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> I play and react. Okay. That's also a very interesting thing actually. Most of these piece, actually three the first three movements, I hope you noticed that the two voices are almost as equal, as as important. There's of course the violin is on top of it, so you easily hear more of the, the, the soprano part. But so many times the bass is exactly doing what I was doing just two bars later. And this adds a lot of texture to the music, because it's not one voice and the accompaniment. It's actually two real voices going on parallel. <coughs> and, and in the middle you have the other. Uh, now we will play yeah, the second half of the third movement. We'll try to make some differences. <laughs>
make sense? Yeah. <laughs>